Old Mystery was the training cave, um, or was to be the training cave. It's a cave that has never been properly surveyed with modern techniques, with a modern sketch. Um, it's also the first cave that opens up in the spring in our area. Nice! And then here's this other track. Prior to our mapping trip, there wasn't a cave map that the state park had. So we were really sketching our own original version of the map. So that's what I mean. It's like, it looks like you could get to the skating room area. Like Absolutely. Yeah, you just gotta get through the squeeze. But I don't know how far that goes. I don't know either. When Seabury said that there was some leads that I should check out, I immediately thought there has to be more to Old Mystery. What? And was the last any of you saw Jackie again? There's always Especially this year, we've had a, a couple of good students who don't mind being the first person through a squeeze as long as it doesn't look too tight. You, you look for somebody who's willing to do it, but also somebody who you're confident isn't going to get stuck trying to do it. And the, the question is always, does it open up to something else on the other side? Uh, back there? It, just goes, <laughs> it just goes back there. It, it wraps around towards your, towards your toes, so to speak. It's crazy. So it it pinches down to this section where you basically are just like this, and you just have to push with your your toes. So you're basically just going like that to just make any progress. And so it goes down to a really tight squeeze, and that's a section. It's probably ten feet of just I don't know eight inches or something. Like just really tight. And so then, up until this I, point, all of our research that I've done with the UNI Astrobiology Underground has been on marked trails. So people have already mapped these locations and we know where we're going. But now we are getting to the point where we're going to locations that haven't been mapped. And it just goes. It just keeps going for like 40 feet after that. It's crazy. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> What a <laughs> so uh, when we go underground to survey, first we have to f locate survey markers or areas that would be good to place a point. Once we have survey markers placed, then we can use a compass to uh, get our underground location. Hey, that's better. Once we're reading locations underground, um, we'll get the compass and get the degrees oh. for the azimuth, um, which is our left and right. And then we'll also get a vertical inclination from survey point to survey point, and that'll tell us how much it's changed vertically. Then um, we'll also use a disto, um, which is basically pretty much has a laser and it can measure out distances. Um, and so we'll get LREDs. So this is left, right, up, down. And then we'll start sketching. I guess the profile you shouldn't take one. No. It's 11.24, so I'm just saying it's been 30 minutes. Yeah. We're still plenty okay on time. Okay. Oh. Is it my turn now? No, not yet. Okay. I'll go back to the classroom. Yeah, we're getting there. <coughs> and so uh, that's part of it is 
surveying is important and having these skills are important because it's going to allow us to go to locations that haven't been researched already and have not been contaminated. What I've learned over the last few years working with grottos, uh, the UNI and national parks is a lot of the, ca the way we survey caves has changed in the last 50 or so years. Uh, it used to just basically be plot diagrams or line diagrams, which would give you a rough estimate of how far the cave is, how long it is, but not a accurate representation of like the volume the cave is taking up or an accurate representation of what every room is looking like. Um, and with, for example, Mystery Cave, we are learning that the survey work that they have done isn't final. <laughs> There's been a lot, a lot of new stuff we have to do. Um, so re survey work and resurvey work is super important for uh, adding distance to the cave and a better understanding where the cave could possibly be going and linking it to other systems. So, so my question is now is if we're just barking up old trees and they know this and they're just like, oh, wow. I, Who, I guess who's crazy enough to be like, oh, I want to go down Most that. Cavers. But like, Jack is one of these years. Yes. So from, just depends on how this, this is rough. So from the, 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 using the GPS pins that I dropped, we're about 26 meters between the two entrances. So where we jump out of, from the entrance to Mystery 1 to Old Mystery. So 25 meters, not that much on this map. So it's about that far on this map. So, and we're going back and in to the bank where we've got a side channel that's known about. So we are actually heading towards part of Mystery 1, and we're not far away, at least roughly. Oh, okay. So that's where we're Obviously, the, big, the biggest hope is that it does connect to Mystery 1, um, which would add a couple hundred feet to the, to the survey, which would be nice. Uh, yesterday, we had gotten most of the cave mapped, uh, and we're now checking out these two leads. Currently, Dr. Seabree is checking out what we believe is a wide junction that could be pushing closer towards the main cave. However, it's gotten quiet, so now we're just kind of waiting to see. Usually protocol is if it's like 10, 15 minutes of silence, that's when you start going looking after them. Uh, so now it's just kind of the waiting game. All right, well, let's go see if we can hear them. It could just be all the noise is getting beaten up around the channel. Yeah. For spring break, um, a lot of the team got safety trained, so if there ever were an incident in the cave, you know how to properly respond to it. And that experience really helped prepare us for today's mission. Um, right now we have Zach and Seabree in this passageway that has not been formally mapped before. It has never been explored and we don't know what goes out there. And from what we can tell, it goes a while. But with that being said, we want to make sure we're doing this in a safe manner. So for this passageway, I am hoping that it connects to Mystery 1. Originally they thought that Old Mystery did not connect anywhere, but we are very close to a lot of the sections within Mystery 1. And what I could see the other day is it just goes. If it goes further, it could connect to Mystery 1, which would really expand the reach of the cave system as a whole. Well, I'll let me understand, explain the process that they're going through right now. It is probably about 80 feet of 8 inch squeeze with either this width or this width on a given area. But after you get past that 80 feet of this absolute misery, uh, it opens up into this lovely room that's probably about three times the size of the room we're sitting in now. 
Um, it's got standing room, beautiful flowstone formations that have been untouched. It'll be good. Now we gotta map it. That's gonna be a long, long hiring process though. Okay. It takes a certain mindset to be in leads um, that are so tight. Um, definitely being aware of how your body is placed within really tight squeezes and how much effort your body is using while you're mentally focused on getting the right measurement or making sure we're being precise with our compass readings. It's definitely been an interesting time to get through that. <laughs> Besides old mystery, there's a lot of potential mystery one, or just mystery in general. There's a painted Indian cave, I believe is the name of it, which is really, really close to the system. Um, and then there's so many, so many leads that have not been checked um, in ages or ever checked. It wasn't when we were doing old mystery, but it was a trip afterwards where we were checking some canyons and we ended up finding a number of lakes that nobody had known about before. Um, so there's a whole lot of potential in mystery yet for that more caves. Or down on the narrow part of the egg. Yeah. Or like the side? I don't know. I'm trying to think what would be left out. Probably side. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, world. You're just like that. Goodbye, cruel world. I just got out of the hole. <laughs> Back in the hole. So with Old Mystery, this location has already been mapped, but the map wasn't complete. Um, Zach and I, we were able to go into this really skinny passageway um, that most cavers would never go into. Spirits kept fluctuating as we made, moved our way because the beginning of that lead is no, no, more wider, no wider than a foot. Um, at its widest and is tall and narrow and filled with three inches thick mud layer um, and you can't stand so you're just sli sliding your way through it uh, it's seeping into your wetsuit it's freezing it's cold um, making you want to be anywhere else so it slopes me sitting in the mud this goes up that's my hand for reference it goes uh we're maybe at three feet is the ceiling, and we're two feet across. Okay. Does it taper off, or does it go any... It's still staying about the same width. Let me get around the bend. So muddy. Oh, it keeps going. It keeps going it from keeps there. Keeps going. Okay, so there, there, there's really almost no end to what we can discover in these caves. Um, Mystery Cave, the the resurvey work that's been ongoing has only recaptured one third of the cave, of the historic cave that was best known at 13 miles. But as we've been resurveying, we keep adding new leads and new directions that have never been on the historic maps. Um, so there's a lot of mileage left to remap, re-explore, and our techniques have only seen maybe 600 feet of this 13-mile cave. So, so the mysteries are boundless. Um, same with any cave you want to look at. Um, there are so many miles of so many caves that no one person could actually answer all the mysteries of all the caves. <laughs> we'll just kind of see where the leads in Old Mystery go. We've got the one passage left to survey once the cave dries out from some flooding. Whether it connects or not, we don't know yet. Yeah, I, I ate some mud on the way back. 